This week I want to teach you three lessons that come right out of the news. Hi, I'm Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, Premium Private Investigator Training, from someone who's been there and done that. Part of that's going to come back when I tell you about this news story and some experience I have in this area. Uh, what it is, is out of Washington, D.C., there was a murder, and the police had a suspect for this murder, but the suspect had what seemed to be an ironclad alibi. Uh, he was wearing an, a house monitoring ankle arrest bracelet from a previous gun charge, and it showed that he was in his apartment miles away from where the uh, killing actually happened. Now, the problem was, as police began to investigate, and they were pretty certain that this was the, the, the suspect who actually did it, as they begin to investigate, and, and if you're not familiar, these ankle of breast bracelets, what they do is they attach around the ankle of the, of the suspect, the person the court wants to monitor. Now, sometimes this is used uh, pre-conviction or even pre-trial to keep track of a person. It allows them to be, say, in their home, <clears throat> and sometimes there are even exceptions where they can go to work and whatnot, rather than have them in lockup before a trial. Uh, but also in post-conviction, they can be used as a way of restricting the person or trying to restrict the person. So they're used a variety of ways. Um, in this particular case, the person was up on gun charges. So the bottom line is, here's what happened. These ankle bracelets are designed so they cannot be cut off or tampered with. And, uh, but this person managed to remove it anyways, and here's how he did it. The person who attached the ankle bracelet attached it to a prosthetic leg, attached it to a, a fake leg. The person, the suspect only had one leg, and whoever attached the ankle bracelet attached it to the fake leg. So the suspect just took the leg off, and uh, he had spare leg, and he went out and uh, using his spare leg to get around, he went out and shot this person and killed him. So, three lessons out of this for you. Um, there are two things directly about ankle bracelets I want you to know, and then a third thing. First of all, ankle bracelets, uh, these house arrest bracelets, almost never do real-time monitoring. This is kind of a misnomer. You would think, oh, sure, they, 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 you know, the parole officer can bring up on a computer and see right where uh, Johnny Suspect is, but that's not the way it works most of the time. In fact, I don't know of anybody using a system like that, any department or any court system anywhere. This is always collected data. So imagine kind of if you put a tracking device on a car, let it drive around, and then retrieve the tracking device and download from the device where the car had been. It's, you know, data in hindsight, and that's the way these ankle bracelets are. So uh, in this case, the police had their suspect. Uh, they go, they retrieve the ankle bracelet, and they see, well, it hadn't even moved around the apartment. It laid there for, I forget if it was 24 or 48 hours, it looked like. But uh, so this data from uh, house arrest ankle bracelets is not real time. That's one thing that you need to know about them. Um, number two... Let me check my list. I want to make sure. Oh, these can be, this is where it comes out of real life. They, they can actually be used to identify somebody. So if you are one of the loss prevention guys out there, I know this happened to me once, or in any circumstance where you have a person who's got an ankle bracelet attached to them, this house arrest ankle bracelet, and they're not being forthcoming about who they are, that type of thing that's happened to me once, we were able to actually run the serial numbers on the bracelet to discover the real identity of the thief that we had apprehended. Um, and, you know, by the way, you know, he was running all kinds of stories that, oh, this was voluntary. I, I th no, this is not from a conviction. I'm not a bad guy. I, I asked to have this on me as a sign of trust for the people who love me in my life. And he was trying every, every scam in the book and maybe he'd be successful sometimes. I don't know. We ID'd him off the bracelet, managed to charge him and get a conviction. That's the number two thing. Uh, number one, the uh, information that from these bracelets is in hindsight. Number two, you can use them to identify a person. And the number three thing, and this is probably the most valuable day-to-day -day lesson for you, is just this attention to detail and doing things the way they're supposed to be done. There is a policy uh, for attaching these that the bracelet, this ankle bracelet, goes up against the skin. 
And while this was a civilian person, uh, an outside contractor in this case, who had attached the uh, ankle bracelet to the suspect, they clearly did not follow proper policy and they just, out of boredom, neglect, just indifference, whatever it might be, attached this to a prosthetic leg, clearly not putting the ankle bracelet up against skin as it's supposed to be when it's attached. So for you, for me, for all of us, really strong lesson in doing things the right way. Uh, and I say it every single week, I say it, do the right thing even if it's the hard thing. And this is just a prime example of something that seems like not a big deal. You're just attaching another of the hundreds of bracelets that you've attached to your career. Uh, maybe the person had other things on their mind. Maybe they're trying to get out of there for lunch. It doesn't matter what. Maybe, well, I'm not going to conjecture on a lot of things. But do the right thing every single time because it does have consequences. This is Larry K. with ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.